In this video we'll go to Hallstatt which has one of the most amazing townscape vantage points in the world and I'll show you how I do my time lapses. There are several car parks in Hallstatt since it is a huge tourist magnet, so it shouldn't be too hard to find a place to park the car. Be aware though that you should park the car downtown and walk the rest of the way to the main vantage point of the town. You can also arrive by train and take the small ferry across the lake. It's pretty easy to find the vantage point simply by following the roads next to the water. If you are in doubt, just find the church and walk north from there. Hallstatt has several vantage points and you can go with the Skywalk train to the top of the mountain for another vantage point which we sadly did not have time to. As an area straight out of a Disney movie, this beautiful little town is located along the Hallstatt lake with classic alpine foreground houses leading into the scene and the church which acts as the focal point. The lake and the mountains in the background both adds to a perfect romantic postcard scene which works all year round. My main goal was to lock down the camera in a nice composition and get some photos, which I could use for some time blending. This is a very time consuming job, which requires a lot of patience, so you might want to come prepared. But if you are in need, Hallstatt provides. So I promised I would do some practical talk about photography. And this is also a part. People are not talking about it. I don't know why it's a taboo. So major bonus points to Hallstatt for actually making it easy to go do your thing. Look, okay, it costs money to go to the toilet, public toilet, but they have put on an exchange automat. So you put in coins and out comes 50 cents. And then you can do, go do your thing. It's so easy. Like when you're standing doing Nighttime photography, or not nighttime, but doing time blending. You need to go do your stuff. It is so important that it is easy to go do your stuff. <laughs> so we used the past one and a half, two hours, on photographing from the postcard view of Hallstatt. It's very, very beautiful. Right now we're entering the blue hour where I'm going to shoot for the lights. I want to blend in to my sunset. That's probably what I'm going to do. So I've tried a lot of different things. I have some long exposures with my 10 stop, with my 6 stop. I have some normal stuff, just trying to get as much done and then I'm just going to blend it all together in Photoshop. And hopefully that will make quite a good picture. Now, when I go to a location like this, I always try to cover my butt and get as many types of photos as possible. As I've already explained a few times, I'm not sure what works before I return to the computer and when editing a photo months after I photographed it, it's not sure I can remember exactly what I was thinking in the specific situation. So I'd rather have too many options to mix and match than too few. So everyone is here to photograph the blue hour and it is pretty clouded crowded. Right now I'm just shooting, shooting, shooting. I am not sure actually if I'm going to blend this with the sunset. I'm probably going to try, but it looks very, very pretty just by itself. I'm also shooting a time lapse and I bet you will be interested in how I do. Well, I have a Sony camera. I have downloaded the time lapse app. When that works, you put it into program mode, you lock it down on ISO 100 and let the camera do the rest. Pretty simple. Right now I am shooting with a manual aperture lens, so I've locked that the one down too, which means that it's only the shutter speed the camera will change over time. Right now I'm shooting with an interval of 
20 seconds, which means that my shutter speed can't increase to more than 20 seconds. You need to count that in when you dial in your settings. But beside that, it's pretty simple. The camera will do it all. We kept photographing all through the blue hour before we decided to pack up and get a proper meal to celebrate our last evening together. The next morning we returned and was very lucky to have a completely different and moody scene with low hanging clouds gliding silently through the mountains. Here I used both my normal method of shooting a time lapse but I also used another method which is simply to record video and speed it up during the post process. During that you are limited to whatever format and resolution you record in and the files can take up a lot of hard disk space but you are more free to adjust the speed and length of the time lapse as to what fits you and your project the best. Remember to record with 25 frames per second and not 50 or 100 frames per second since that is a complete waste of memory. We were genuinely surprised by the amount of tourists and photographers who were there the evening before. And we were even more surprised the following morning by the huge amount of Asian newlyweds and their photographers. Apparently it is a thing to get your wedding photos taken here. So since this is the last part of my European series from the Alps, I just want to give a huge shout out to Miguel who have been on this trip, and Roy, and Kai, and... Sophie is down here somewhere, but I will link to them down in the description, so make sure to check them out. We have a bit different style, all of us, a little bit. Roy, the most moody man. Um, so it will be interesting to see how our shots turned out, because they will be a bit different, but we kind of shot the same thing. Hallstatt is an immensely beautiful location and despite the huge crowds, it's well worth visiting. So after Hallstatt we drove back to Munich and our ways separated. Sophie and I took the long drive back to Denmark after a month of amazing photographic experiences. Looking back at a journey which covered three countries in Britain and three countries in the Alps, it's always interesting to get back and actually start the process of editing. As you probably know, the editing phase actually extends your feeling of the journey quite a lot. As with both my US series and Pharaoh series, the Britain and Elves part of the Europe series you've just seen takes up to half a year to complete depending on how much footage I return with. That actually means I can't apply the experience I get from editing a Britain series and Elves series before they're done. I didn't know how the series from Britain and the Alps would turn out and when I went to Lofoten back in November I had only got the experience from the first few episodes of the Britain series which I could apply in the field when I was in Lofoten. I've luckily learned so much more from finishing the Britain series, the Alps series and the Lofoten series back in January which I can 
put into my next videos, which will finally be a continuation of my Iceland series. Hopefully that will turn out great. Remember to check out both Kai, Roy and Mikkel down in the description. And you're probably wondering what is happening with Sophie and all the pictures. And before she has finished her PhD, I don't think she will have any time to actually work on her pictures. Next week's video will be a new video with five tips on composition in landscape photography. And after that, my small series from Lofoden will begin. I sincerely hope you have enjoyed following along on this incredible journey through Britain and the Alps, and that you have learned a few things here and there. As always, I would highly appreciate a like and a comment, and thank you so much for watching.